Hi, everyone. My name is John Algram, and it's a privilege for me to be superintendent of Warren Township High School District 121. Here today in this video to try to inform our public about our referendum efforts uh, in this past April, as well as next June, try to provide some context for our district's financial challenges. For many years, the district has suffered from revenue shortages, and we've tried to make the most of our resources best we can for our students. Uh, due to those challenges, back in April of 2021, the board did place an operating rate increase referendum question uh, on the ballot, but the vote itself did not receive enough votes to pass. Uh, as a result of that failed vote, uh, our Board of Education this past summer uh, quickly got to work because they realized that there was some critical and urgent uh, decisions to be made regarding programming available for our students. And they wanted to make sure that they took advantage of the next available opportunity to put another operating rate question out there for the community to weigh in on as to whether or not the district could benefit from more local revenue. That date has been established as June 28th, 2022. And also our Board of Education wanted to make sure that our administrative team took every opportunity to educate our public in regards to the details of this referendum question. As part of this video, what we hope to do is provide information regarding the question itself and the benefits for our WTHS students. As you can see from our agenda, there are a number of items that we're gonna move through quickly. Wanna make sure we uh, want you to see that agenda and know that at the end, we will have a Q and A slide, but probably we won't actually have time for questions and answers, but rather give you some information on where you can go with your further questions. To start off our discussion, uh, we would like to, I would like to turn it over to our Assistant Superintendent for Business and Services, Dr. Michael Engel. Warren has the lowest local revenue per student of all high school districts in Lake County at $13,293. Warren receives $2,940 from state sources. Warren receives $400 from federal sources. Warren's total revenue per student is $16,633 annually, the worst of all high school districts in Lake County. These 10 high school districts are all the high school districts in Lake County. These are not cherry picked. Waukegan, North Chicago, Lake Zurich, Round Lake, Wakanda, and Barrington are all unit districts. They're funded differently than high school districts. The average total revenue for a Lake County high school district is $25,337 per student. Warren would need an additional $8,704 in revenue per pupil just to be average. Warren tries to offset these particularly low uh, local resources with registration fees. These are the student fees for the 21-22 school year. Warren Township has the highest registration fees of all the high school districts in Lake County at $545 per student. Warren has the third highest parking fees in Lake County at $340. Warren has the highest athletic fees of all Lake County high schools at $240 per sport. Warren is tied with the highest club fees of all of Lake County. Warren has implemented cost control measures that include the elimination of the late afternoon, evening, and consolidated regular bus routes, reduced health insurance costs, refinanced debt, relocated special education transition program to the Oak Plain campus, renegotiated vendor contracts, completed building improvements to help lower operating costs, implemented salary freezes for administrators, and have uh, done staff reductions, which cut 66 positions between 2015 and 2021. To reiterate, Warren has cut 66 positions between 2015 through, two to, uh, through 2021. This has included 48 teachers, nine science teachers, eight English teachers, eight social studies teachers, six math teachers, four physical education teachers, three world language teachers, three social workers, two business teachers, one industrial tech teacher, one library media specialist teacher, and one guidance counselor. In addition to the 48 teachers, nine school support staff have also been cut, five transportation staff, three administrators, and one school resource officer. All these cuts have had a negative impact Warren has had increased class sizes. Warren has reduced course options and Warren has reduced academic assistance for students. Warren has the highest staffing levels of any Lake County High School District. As you can see, we are at the bottom of all these metrics. This is not exactly the same as class size. However, it is related. Therefore, schools with a lower student to teacher ratio would be able to provide smaller and lower class sizes. 
We have the highest student to teacher ratio in all of Lake County high school districts at 19.9 students to, te to one teacher. The average Lake County high school ratio is 17.3 to one, meaning 17.3 students to one teacher. We have the highest administrator to student ratio in all of Lake County at 193.8 students to one administrator. The average in Lake County is 108.3 to one. Due to our staffing reductions, we've needed to change our process for our scheduling. English classes are now at 30 students per class. Science is anywhere from 28 to 30 students, even though our labs can only accommodate 24. Physical education is between 45 to 50 students. Now I'll turn it over to Dr. Algram, our superintendent of schools, to go over the timing of the projected reduction. Thanks, Dr. Engel. We also did want to make sure that we are very clear with the community on uh, the reductions in our programming moving forward without additional funding uh, over the next two years, as the reductions now also start to dramatically reduce opportunities for our students. For next school year, the 22-23 school year, we are anticipating approximately reducing by 13 more positions in addition to the 66 that Dr. Engel referenced. These will continue to increase class sizes, more reduced student course options, and reduce academic assistance available for our students. Also, one of those 13 positions is to be a band director position, which will greatly reduce our band programming available to our students, including the elimination uh, of our competitive marching band. In our athletic programs for 22-23, that's next school year, we'll be looking at the elimination of our entry-level teams. And I'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. And finally, the fees will continue to increase without additional funding, looking at a registration fee of 600, parking of 340, athletics of 260, and a club fee of 50. This next chart just shows uh, specifically what the elimination of entry-level athletics teams uh, would do to uh, our athletic program. And as you can see, sports with four levels of participation will be reduced to three. Sports with three levels of participation would be reduced to two, and sports with two levels of participation will be reduced to one, with the entry-level team being eliminated in each case. These reductions will most likely reduce student participation opportunities in all sports and across all grade levels, as most, if not all programs, will need to make cuts based on ability. And so students uh, that may have been trying out for certain levels uh, may now be bumping other kids who are older. An example of that would be, for example, our boys uh, basketball program, which currently has three levels, a varsity, sophomore, and freshman level. And so if you can see the elimination of a freshman level, what that would do, it would we currently have a freshman A and B uh, schedule that we play. We would play neither of those. Freshman students would uh, ultimately, who are interested in back basketball, would have to try out for, if you will, the sophomore level. Some sophomores may have to try out for the varsity level. In essence, what that does is it cuts participation for students who have been participating, but may be cut based on ability level. So we wanted to make sure that people were clear of what that means, the elimination of entry level athletic teams currently slated for the 22-23 school year. For the 23-24 school year, without additional funding, the district is anticipated to need to reduce from an eight-period day to a seven-period day, which has significant negative impacts on the education of every one of our students at WTHS. We'll discuss this more later, but this is basically done by the elimination of 20 teaching positions uh, through our programming, in addition uh, to the 79 that would have been anticipated to be cut at that point in time. These positions would be done through basically all of our departments of industrial tech, art, music, and business, world languages. Uh, is, those are traditionally uh, elective areas that students need an eight period day to access, as well as that's true in social studies, science, and math. Also, there's tech campus availability issues that we'll also discuss a little bit later. It's also as early as the 23-24 school year, we would see the complete elimination of our athletic and activity program. And in 23-24, our registration fee uh, escalates up to 660, parking at 340. We would not have an athletic or club fee because we wouldn't be hosting those particular activities. And so as I mentioned to start this video off, our Board of Education on August 17th did approve a resolution to take place uh, to place a 60 cent tax limiting rate question on the June 28th, 2022 election ballot. 
The details of this question are would provide for approximately 13 and a quarter million dollars in additional revenue annually for the school district with an estimated annual tax impact of $200. That's about $16.67 per month per $100,000 of a home's fair market value. And so, as I mentioned earlier, in trying to find solutions, we're going to start to review with you now exactly what that revenue would be used for in regards to providing opportunities for our students. And I would like to turn it over to our Assistant Superintendent for Instructional Services, Chris Juk here. So, as we talk about solutions, we want to talk about four different pillars in which we're going to invest in our students. Uh, so most importantly, as Dr. Algram talked about, is we want to preserve the eight period data. That's where our students get their uh, get their opportunities to pursue passions. Uh, it's where we have provide them with high quality education. Uh, we want to make sure we're improving our academic supports and mental health services, make sure we're need, meeting the academic and social emotional needs of all of our students. And then we want to make sure we're restoring and protecting our athletic programs and restoring and protecting our activities in clubs because we know that extracurricular activities are extremely important to our students and our community. So why is the seven period day so important and why do we want to make sure that we preserve that? Well, right now, we our students are able to take seven classes per day. Uh, so that's up to 28 classes over a four year period. If we were to go down to a seven period day, they will lose one class per year. Now on the surface, that might not sound like as much. What that has the impact of doing is they students lose their competitive edge for college and career opportunities as they lose access to those courses. They're not able to access our two and four year programs for certificate professional certifications, things uh, like uh, um, Tech Academy in our business program where they earn technical certifications, Project Lead the Way, which is our pre-engineering program, um, world language are the world language programs, which are four-year programs that lead to advanced placement and seal of biliteracy recognitions and certifications. Uh, band, uh, they would have lose access to potentially uh, taking band throughout their high school career or choir. Um, and then technology campus. Right now, technology campus is a two-year program that provides an amazing opportunity for our students. They would not be able to access that mostly until their senior year, which would then preclude them from having any sort of uh, certification that goes with their tech campus experience. So in a seven period days, we talk about they losing access to things. How does that happen? They lose the opportunity for multiple electives. So right now, a student at Warren can choose, I want to take Spanish and band. I want to take Project Lead the Way and art. I want to take advanced placement U.S. history and advanced placement psychology. It's and. I have two rooms in my, two places in my schedule to take these two courses. In a seven period day, that becomes an or. So in, you can take Spanish or you can take band. You could take a business class or you can take art. Students are forced to choose which elective they want to pursue over four years, and then they lose those opportunities. They lose those opportunities enrolling in multiple uh, rigorous coursework for advanced placement or dual college. They lose the opportunity to take multiple elective choices. They lose the opportunity for two to four year programs and certifications. However, with funding that band director position, uh, the Board of Education uh, has committed to replacing that band director position for the 22-23 school year to the extent possible with additional funding. Uh, so now I'm going to turn it over to uh, Dr. Pat Keeley, our Associate Superintendent for Student Services. Another pillar that uh, Mr. Gio Karras had talked about was approving our academic support and our mental health services. Um, as we have reduced staff over the past several years, it has also eliminated our opportunity to have math or English intervention programs or assistance rooms where students could go to get help. Um, obviously, that has a, a direct impact on our students' ability to succeed in high school. Um, with the additional funds, we will certainly look to restore our math and English intervention program so those students can receive academic assistance during the school day, uh, whether that being during the study hall or opposite their, or during their lunch hour, uh, to get the academic support that they need. Uh, in addition, uh, we want to address the critical mental health needs for our students. Um, we have we have again seen in the reductions that were talked about earlier in our so, uh, in our student service staff. Uh, we want to address this and make sure we have the appropriate staffing levels for mental health services for our students. Another pillar was restore and protect our activities and clubs. As you can see on the right hand side of the slide, approximately 3,000 students participate in activity clubs and our and our athletics. Our students love to be engaged and they certainly love to be involved in our clubs and activities. Uh, and as you can see from the slide, we have up to 55 clubs and activities that are slated to be eliminated 
Um, and it would include our fine and performing arts, our competitive activities, our leadership and service organizations, our cultural based clubs, and our publications. And finally, we want to restore and protect our athletic programs. Currently, WTHS fields more than 30 athletic teams. Um, and without additional funding, a level within each program would be reduced next school year. Uh, currently, our athletic director is scheduling a year in advance as, as we do every year, and we are not scheduling that entry level program. Uh, however, the Board of Education uh, has, has supported that should a referendum vote be successful in June with the additional funding, the athletic programs for next year will be restored to the greatest extent possible. Uh, student fees. Uh, as we saw in earlier slides, we have some of the highest student fees in Lake County. Again, that's due to the lack of local uh, sources of revenue. So we try to increase our revenue through student fees. Uh, the first bar on the top, those are our current fees. The second bar in the middle, that's what will happen if a, if a June referendum is not successful. Um, and then what the Board of Education has supported in, in order to try to normalize our fees to make it more in line with the other Lake County schools. If a referendum is successful in June, the fees will be reduced. The registration fee will be reduced from 600 to 200. The parking fee, 340 to 200. Athletic fee, 260 to 200. And our club fee will stay flat at 50. Again, a reduction in student fees for our families allows WTHS to be more comparable with other school districts. The average savings due to this fee reduction would be approximately $550 per student per year for our families. Impact of ad additional local funding from the June 28, 2022 referendum. So in summary, investing in our students allows us to, most importantly, preserve the eight period day, improve our academic support and mental health services, restore and protect our clubs and activities, restore and protect our athletic programs, and reduce or normalize our student fees for our families. And then again, in summary, when you're looking at our current revenue, uh, the per pupil revenue for the 2020 Warren Township, again, is ranked last. And I challenge anyone to look at anything that Warren offers where we're ranked last, whether that be athletics, academics, or our activities. So what would the impact of a 60 cent limiting rate increase be for Warren Township High School? Um, it wouldn't certainly get us to the average amount. And Dr. Engel had talked about that earlier, what that would take, um, I think with you know, around $8,000 per student. Uh, Warren Township with the increase of 60, 60 cent limiting rate would improve from last to ninth place. Uh, although that doesn't seem like a lot, uh, hopefully as you've seen through this, pro, uh, through this uh, video, that those programs that we would be able to implement and, and maintain will have a, a significant impact on our communities and families uh, and, and certainly would help out the school and our students. Just want to wrap up by first off uh, thanking everyone for your time and interest in learning about our uh, referendum uh, set for June 28, 2022. Uh, if you do have information, we do have a dedicated web page on our district website. Uh, for, with referendum information. So you might find more information uh, there. Also, my contact information is in this slide deck. Please feel free to reach out uh, with any uh, specific questions you might have that we didn't answer in this video. And as always, thanks for your ongoing support of Warren Township High School and our students.